Welcome to this tutorial about AI and more specifically about reacting to perception. Now, in the previous episode, we were talking about how per perception works and I was demonstrating how to debug and uh, give you all of the tools surrounding uh, seeing the effects of the, the perception system. Uh, today we will be following that up with how you can actually react to the stimuli and the perception data that you actually get. So let's just jump into it. So here we are inside Unreal Engine 5 again, and this is the project that we continued from last time. Um, so let's reiterate a little bit quickly. We have our AI character. Our AI character has perception on it. We have defined that the AI character should have two different senses, one for sight, one for hearing. And these senses detect any stimuli for these sources that it that is able to gather. So we have a third person character here, which is the player character, which could report some noise, which caused this sense of hearing from the AI to react. And if the character walked into it, uh, it's a line of vision, then it would sense it because of sight, because this has a stimuli for sight. We also create a distraction device, which would allow us to report noise in a different way to sort of simulate the way of this, distracting a guard or something like that. Now, how can we make use of this information? Well, if we go to the AI character and we go to the AI perception, you see that we have a few different events here available for us to use. We have on perception updated, on target perception updated, on target perception info updated, and then some on component related ones which are not interesting for us now uh, these let's implement all three of these by just clicking on them like so and here we have them so you can see that they have a little bit different inputs or outputs rather for you to work with um, on target info perception this will be um, we can this is a structure we can break it out so you can see the, the information a little bit you, you get the target id a target which is the actor same as here and you have a stimulus and you can break this out as well and then you actually get the stimulus data related to uh, the sense that uh, you used and this will be thrown in um, uh, one at a time per actor per uh, stimulus so so this is um, if you want to work on it on a like uh, single basis uh, I think there might be some use cases for this however I do believe that this is more flexible since it encompasses everything um, so we will be leaving these for now because we will be uh, entertaining some of this information down here as well and how this works is let's demonstrate uh, if we were to first of all let's make a loop here and we'll plug that in like so you can see we get an element of uh, actors here that are updated and these actors are the ones that are have been updated when it comes to uh, uh, the perception stimuli so when something happens, um, you have information about that specific character. So uh, if we drag out from this and we type in um, perception, uh, we get a actor's perception and then it's uh, denoting that we're using the, the component for AI perception in this case. So this is what this looks like. So we're essentially querying for this actor, what kind of perception information do we have available? Uh, so if we were to break this like so, you can see that we get a target again, which is again the target over here. And uh, we can check, uh, is it hostile? Uh, we also get a last sensed stimuli. And this is again a loop, or oh, a loop, uh, an array. So if we were to loop on this, you could see that what we get here is another structure, and we can break this. And you can see that this is the stimulus, same as the ones that we're getting up here. So essentially what's happening is, uh, when perception is updated for an actor, this is called 
uh, with the actors that have been updated, one or multiples. Um, and then we can check what is our perception information for those different actors. And then we can get all of the stimuli for them. In this case, we have two senses, we have sight and hearing. So we would be getting an array of two, which would be reporting our sight of sense perception and our hearing sense perception for the current actor that we're working on here. And then we can get the information about it here. So if we were to, uh, not, not loop, uh, let's do print to just visualize what is happening. And then we can say, hello, it will be fine. So let's play. And you can see we have no text in the top left. We run in here. You get a lot, lots, actually, that's not good. We have this um, uh, flying ball still, uh, which is interrupting and showing us a lot of information. Let's uh, find the ball, distraction device. Let's just turn off the simulate physics for it for a little bit so it doesn't um, um, give us information from there because we just want to play around with uh, this character to demonstrate how this works. So uh, let's go into the debug. You can see I'm not in his range yet. And then as soon as I walk in, I'm also gonna see, you can see in the top left, you can see um, control tab debug messages. So if I press control tab, now we will also see uh, print string messages uh, on the screen, otherwise they would be uh, filtered out and not be shown so you can see the, the debugs here, but now we will, should be able to. So we walk in here, you can see we get a hello, hello, and I walk out, I get another hello, hello. So what's happening is I'm walking in, uh, it's giving me, uh, or it's sending to uh, the AI that perception has been updated for this actor, and we get one hello for each sense that it has connected. Uh, to check against. Um, so if we were to go to our AI character and we were to do something like this, we can make an append so we can get a little bit more information about this. We can say, um, uh, do, 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 do. let's do an array index for the first one. So we'll say which sense and then we'll say if it's sensed by that sense. So successfully sensed, meaning that that's the sense that it was uh, detecting it with, or not detecting. So let's go in here. We can run without the debug information, should be fine. So we walk into the range of sight. You can see zero is true and one is false. We can make those last a little bit longer so we actually have the time to read those. Maybe five seconds. Uh, so you just can follow along. So zero is true, one is false. And if we go into our AI character and our AI perception, you can see zero is our sight. So it has seen us, it has not heard us. Uh, but since I also made a, uh, a key an event so I can generate perception for hearing, we can also walk in here and he can see that he has detected us by sight and not by hearing, but I can press my button to detect by hearing now. You can see that we have, he can now see, or at, see and he has heard us. So if we walk outside of his range here, we can see that he loses track of uh, uh, the site, for example. It still says that he has he heard us because he still has that information. Uh, let's see, one, two, three, four. Okay, sometimes this visualization doesn't work that well, let's see if we can, like so. So if we make a noise, we generate a yellow sphere over here. You can see that over there. Uh, but, and also let's press uh, Control Tab. And then I walk out the range for sight. You can see it says false for sight, one true uh, for the hearing still. And that's because it's still here. Uh, what's important now is that it has heard us, but the hearing event has an age to it. Um, so you can see it's been 27 seconds there. So what's important uh, for that is that we can have things like um, hearing here on the hearing config. We have a range where we can uh, detect and so stuff like that, but we can also have a an age for how long a sound will be relevant to us. 
So if we have this, for example, for five seconds, zero means that it will always stay there. But if we run in like this and we say, uh, we make a sound, we get one for true, and then we wait five seconds and we update the stimuli by walking out of his, or oh, you could actually see it already there, that it's updating by itself. After five seconds of not having heard the sound, it changes from one true to one false instead. So that is how uh, you can work with uh, the stimuli to uh, update information. So uh, important, the most important things to get from this stimuli are generally if it has been successfully sensed. Um, tags can be very useful when it comes to sounds, but if you're working in blueprints, sounds is the only noise or the only event you can create which has a tag to it. Um, perception by sight and perception by damage, for example, you don't have the tag uh, available to, to send in. So generally the tag would be something to define different kinds of sounds or noises for you to work against. Uh, other than that, you have the age and the expiring age. So most likely the age is something that you can make use of to see like uh, if you have an updated stimuli, um, maybe like a sound maybe that's interesting as long as you don't actually have vision of the character uh, and stuff like that and if you have uh, if it has been a while since you've seen a character but you hear a sound that has a lower age maybe you want to go investigate the sound instead of the last position where you saw someone and stuff like that so this is where you would build your logic against and we will be taking a little bit more uh, of a deeper look into where we can actually make use of this information in behavior trees in the next episode. Uh, but we will not be delving it in, into that in this, this episode because it would be very long then. Um, but yeah, so, so this is how that works. And to demonstrate now, uh, let's take a different character here, or actually let's move our character over here to this place. And then we'll create a copy. And then we play, you can see that we get four outputs here now. We have uh, two visual truths. If we, let's see if we do this. Okay, it didn't start, it might have issue. Let's try that again. Okay, it's not displaying him, that's fine. It's not important. Um, so you can see that we have information about both of these are being seen right now and none of them are being heard. If I were to move out now to the site range, you can see that it's only giving two new updates. So uh, let's see here the AI character. So what's happening here is that when it was updating this time, it was only for one character, not the other character that it still has uh, in its vision. So it doesn't get sent into this array. So this array will only contain the actors that actually have new um, perception information available to you to react upon. So that's good to know. And uh, then you can um, react to the different stimuli that you have. Now, how do you react to the different stimuli? How, how do you uh, know which sense has been used? Well, you have a few different options because of, again, this is a bit more limited when it comes to blueprints than it is when it comes to using it in C++. Uh, but if you are using blueprints and this is what you have to work with, uh, the things you could do is you could have things like um, the tags define if it is a sound or not. Uh, the problem is if you were to have more stimuli here other than just sight and hearing, then you could only determine is it sound or is it not? You wouldn't know which of the other senses that you are currently working with. Uh, another way to do this is if you were to have something like a check against the array to see what, uh, for, sorry, the array index to see. You could, for example, do a switch or a if statement or something like that. And you can have um, one here, one pin for each of the different senses. So this would correspond to 
index zero is the sight one, just like we saw in the bug uh, information. One would be hearing, and then you could have logic for sight here, and you could have logic for hearing here, for example. Uh, so you could react in different ways. Um, and then that information in itself would, of course, need to be stored and handled somewhere. And that's where we get into the behavior trees in the other episode. Um, yes. Um, I hope all of this was understandable and made sense. It will hopefully make even a little bit more sense once we get to the behavior trees and we actually start making use of the information that we have. Uh, but for now, I think this will be fine, so it doesn't get bloated and we have to have behavior trees in the same episode. So we'll just leave it here for now and pick it up in the behavior tree episode. And we'll get rid of this one. And yeah, I'll see you there. Hopefully you found this video helpful. If you liked the video, leave a like. If you did not like it, leave a dislike. Leave any suggestions or comments you have down below. Subscribe and share this video if you want to see more like it in the future. That is all for now. Keep on learning. Take care.